If someone asks me that question, like, what is your number one favorite bug that you would recommend to anyone? It would be, and I don't hear a lot of people talk about which I think is just such a shame. Don't read that. In my opinion, it was kind of shitty. <gasps> oh my god. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I am so excited to be talking about all of the books in today's video because I will tell you what my all-time favorite books are. Okay, little disclaimer, all-time is very like a bold statement to say and of course my list will change over the next couple of years, but as of right now in 2021, these are the books that I would consider some of the top stories that I have read across my 22 years on this planet <laughs> and if you're thinking like oh my god sabine i've added so many books to my tbr right now i need to buy them all i'd say check out the surface of today's sponsor so sponsor sabine come here <laughs> If you haven't heard of Karma yet, I am pretty sure you will be happy to hear that you can save a lot of money using their app or their Chrome extension, which is free, by the way. I've personally been able to save some money with Karma when I was like online book shopping or shopping for clothes, which is so nice because then I can use the money that I saved for other stuff as well. By using Karma, you ensure that you will never miss a price drop or a coupon code. I highly recommend you to check out the link in my description box to check out Karma for your Yourself. You can install Karma by going to Karma's homepage and then enabling the Chrome extension. And if you've done that, you can just go to your favorite stores, browse all the websites, and Karma will do its job for you. And I think especially if you've watched this video, I give you a lot of book recommendations. You're probably adding some books to your TBR that you want to buy and then I'm going to show you how to use Karma and to cheaply buy books. So like I said, you just use Karma as the Google Chrome extension. You visit your favorite online bookstore. When you want to buy a book, but you want to wait for like a coupon code or a discount, you click the little Karma button, you save it to your list, and then you can specify when you want to receive like a notification from Karma, like when there's like any price drop or if they have like 25 or a 50% discount, then you can get notified by Karma through your email or you can get a mobile push. So I've also made a list, for instance, for like furniture or decoration stuff that I really want to get for my room because as you can see, this room could use a little bit of that extra like oomph. <laughs> If you know what I mean. One of the main benefits of the list feature is that it organizes your shopping and it also helps with impulse purchases. Also, a special feature of Karma is that when you are on the website that you are browsing, Karma actually scans the website for coupons automatically. And when you go to like your basket or how do you call it, your online shopping cart, Karma automatically adds the coupons whilst you're checking out your stuff. In order to be able to use this feature, you have to use Karma on like the Chrome website. So getting Karma on your computer, using it as like the Chrome extension is an absolute must so that you will always get the best prices for the products that you wanna buy. And besides that, you can earn Karma cash when you shop from their selected retail partners. So like I said, you can get Karma's free Chrome extension by clicking the link in my bio. I mean, you're saving quite some money. Who doesn't wanna do that? And now let's go on to the video. So thank you so much again to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Right now, let's start off with, I think my most loved genre, which is YA feminism stories. Like either be it on the foreground or on the background, I just really love the topic of feminism. And I have four YA feminist novels that I want to talk about. There are also like little sub genres into this one, but I will be talking about like everything that I enjoy about these books. So let's start off with a new favorite of mine that I read at the beginning of 2021. So if you've been watching my videos since like this year, you've heard me talk about The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness for a couple of times already. And this is kind of like a very different YA feminist novel from the other ones that I've read because this one reads like a thriller. We follow three different like main characters, three perspectives throughout this book. We have Alex Kraft and her sister was raped and murdered a couple of years ago and she has a very daunting secret of her own, namely that she has killed someone herself. Nobody knows that but everyone knows the story of her sister so everyone knows about like Alex and everything that happened in her family. Then we have Jack Fisher who is like the jock in high school, the popular guy, and he is really interested in Alex. He also feels really guilty about the role that he played in the night that Anna, so Alex's sister's 
body was discovered. And lastly, we have PK, which stands short for Preacher's Kid. Her actual name is Claire, and she also has like a reputation of her own since she is the Preacher's Kid. And these three unlikely characters come together and become friends. So it's like unlikely friendships, and it really explores the theme of rape and rape culture. And like I said, it reads like a thriller because only Alex knows that she killed someone, and it's just like, it's very intriguing. You're constantly on the edge of your seat. And I think that Mindy McGinnis really discussed like rape and rape culture so well. And the ending of this book had me gasping and mostly sobbing. <laughs> I was crying so much. I felt overwhelmed. So I would highly recommend this one. The cover looks a bit weird, but don't let that fool you. Next up, I have Meat Market by Juno Dawson. Unfortunately, I do not have a physical copy with me. I lend it out to Leora from Books with Leo and Oh my gosh, she needs to read it because it's so good. I've forgotten our main character's name. Oh my god, how stupid. But our main character is a very androgynous looking girl and one day she's like out and about with her friends and she gets scouted by like a modeling agent. And then her like life of fame really starts off. She becomes like an international supermodel and this book deals a lot with mental health issues, the pressure of the media, how toxic the like modeling and fashion industry is and I think mainly body image and body dysmorphia. Our main character she doesn't make the most amazing decisions so it's a very I do think realistic story or like realistic portrayal of like how your life just completely changes and also the relationships that you had before you were famous they will change as well and I just I, I was blown away by how amazing this story was. And I don't hear a lot of people talk about Meat Market, which I think is just such a shame. It's definitely an underrated favorite of mine and I really wanna give it a reread again and I wanna read much more of Juno Dawson's work. And the last two YA contemporaries that I need to talk about are very focused around mental health. Another author that I don't hear a lot of people talk about because she's mostly well known in the UK, but not really in like the US, which is Holly Bourne. And then more specifically her book, Am I Normal Yet? This is the first book in the companion trilogy of the spinster club and in this one you follow our main character evie she has ocd and at the start of this book she felt kind of like okay about how everything was going she's going to a new school which means a fresh start but as like the novel goes on her ocd progresses again she kind of has like a relapse and this book really discusses that topic as well so definitely trigger warnings if you cannot handle discussions on like ocd she also goes to like a mental hospital if i'm saying that correctly but she also just wants to go to school make friends go to parties perhaps get a boyfriend and like my favorite parts about this book were the friendship that evie has with lottie and What's her name again? Oh my gosh, so bad. Amber, Amber and Lottie, they become super close friends and they even like create this feminist club and they come together every single week and discuss a feminist topic. So this book really ticks all of the boxes for me with like things that I enjoy being discussed in books. I also really enjoyed the sequel. I haven't read book three. I do own it and that one focuses on Lottie and she is like a vlogger as well. So I think that that would be so cool and I would highly recommend for you to pick up this book by Holly Bourne. I also read The Manifesto on How to Be Interesting by her, which was her first ever published book. Don't read that. In my opinion, it was kind of shitty. But this one, it's fabulous. <laughs> this is my ultimate favorite YA contemporary. If someone asks me that question, like what is your number one favorite book that you would recommend to anyone, it would be Radio Silence by Ellis Oseman. Unfortunately, I have the really ugly cover, so don't really look at this, but our main character, Frances, is like a study machine. She doesn't really have any friends. She doesn't really have any hobbies. And at the beginning of the story, she meets Alad and they become really, really great friends. And Frances states at the beginning of this book that this is just a friendship. This is not a love story, which you often see in YA contemporaries. So it was really refreshing to not have a romance in this book with our main character. And when their friendship kind of like falls apart a bit in this book, Frances just doesn't know what to do with herself. And she has to decide what her future will look like. Will she go to college? And what kind of like study does she want to do? And I think for me, this was a book that I read at the exact time that I needed it in my life. I myself was struggling so much with my university degree. Like, oh my God, what do I want to do with my life? I think I was really struggling back in January of 2020 when I picked this book up. After reading 
reading this book, I kind of was able to figure out what I wanted to do with my life more. So I'm also starting a psychology degree in two weeks, <laughs> which is completely different from biomedical sciences, which was what I studied before. Frances was going through the same exact struggles. She was just like in high school still. So yeah, a bit younger than I am. But this book really helped me calm down, feel a bit more relaxed, knowing that I'm not the only one who is going through that struggle. And even if you're a bit older like me, I'm 22, it's still okay if you have that struggle. Don't worry about it. And this book to me is just one big hug and I love it so much and I think that everyone especially younger people who are figuring out what they want to do in their lives it should be kind of like mandatory for them to read this story and know that it's okay if you don't know it's okay so now I want to just completely switch from genres and let's talk about the two fantasy stories that I have to tell you about <laughs> I don't know why I did that So let's start off with one that I haven't really talked about on my channel actually because I read these books in like 2017, 2018, so it's, it's been a while. I also haven't really reread them in a long time, so I just have fond memories of them when I think back on these books. And the first series that I want to talk about is the Rebel of the Sand series by Halloween by Alwyn Hamilton and also the sequels which are Traitor to the Throne and Hero at the Fall. Also these covers are just my absolute fave. So I bought this book on a whim because it was very very cheap when I bought it online. I didn't know anything about the story and when I started reading it I was completely sucked into it. So this is a YA fantasy in which our main character Amani Alhiza she lives with her aunt and uncle in this super tiny village and nothing much really happens there. Her relationship with their aunt and uncle isn't also super great. So Amani decides to escape her town and when she decides that she comes across a foreigner, a very mysterious one, and together they decide to run. But the desert plains are full of dangerous magic, the sultan's army is on the rise and Amani is soon caught at the heart of a fearless rebellion. The setting was amazing to me, it's like a magical desert. Amani is also super badass and she's like a slingshot shoot person. <laughs> That was not a great description, but she is really handy with a gun. You also get to know a bit more of like the backstory of the country in which Amani lives and those little tales really feel like fairy tale-esque, which is just so wonderful to read about. And the side characters were all very interesting to me. They all have very different powers. I love that so much. And this series just has like a special place in my heart and I really want to give it a reread soon-ish, I guess. Whenever I look at this series, I just, it, it warms my heart. And I feel like not a lot of people have read this series as well. And I just need more people to gush about it. So you gotta read it, okay? And then the second fantasy series that I want to talk about is an adult one. And especially the first two books are my faves. The third one, a little less, but that is the Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. My favorite in the series was definitely A Gathering of Shadows, which is the second book in the trilogy. But A Darker Shade of Magic focuses on our main character, Kel. He is one of the very, very few people who can travel in between parallel versions of London. You have four different versions of London. Red, which is super magical. We have Grey London, which is basically our world. White London, where magic is very dangerous and Black London. Nobody really knows about Black London. <laughs> and Kel is kind of being a little badass, being a little cheeky boy. <laughs> and he is secretly taking different items from different Londons with him, which is forbidden. And one of those items is actually quite dangerous, which leads to quite some trouble. And another character that we follow is Delilah Bart, who is a pirate, or she wants to become. What I love so much about this series is all of these different versions of London. They are so interesting. The whole magic system, I also really enjoyed to learn about that. I don't know what it is about pirate stuff and bugs, but I just adore it. And I also just love and adore the characters in these stories. So definitely something that you should check out if you love like a cozy, magical fantasy. Okay, we have three more books that I want to talk about. The sweat is really on my face. It's it's really hot. <laughs> 
staying a bit into the fantastical atmosphere, but this one is definitely horror paranormally, which is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, a recent favorite of mine. We follow the Hollow sisters who 10 years ago went missing as children. They were gone for a month and then they all of a sudden popped up. Nobody knew where they went, but also slowly their appearances started to change. Because of this like mysteriousness, they have become really quite famous. But at the beginning of this book, the eldest sister goes missing again and the other two sisters decide to go looking for her again, but they might not be the only ones doing just that. It has a super dark and eerie atmosphere. I love that the most about this book. The cover really describes kind of like the elements and themes in this book as well. There's a lot of botanicals, creepy little insects. I honestly wouldn't recommend reading this book completely like in the dark and by yourself because you will definitely be spooked a couple of the times and like the descriptions are so grotesque. And I also really like seeing the three sisters, their relationships in this book as well. This is truly an otherworldly story and it's perfect for like fall and Halloween time. So you should get it before that comes around the corner. And then the final two books that I want to talk about are historical fiction books. I've actually discovered that that is a genre that I really enjoy reading about, which I would not have guessed beforehand. One is super obvious and I will just like quickly get it out of the way, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I recently reread this one. I made like a whole reading vlog about it. So for my in-depth reading experience and my thoughts, I would recommend for you to check out that video. I'm pretty sure you all know what this is about. It's about Evelyn Hugo, a famous Hollywood star. So this story takes place from the 1950s until the 1980s. And she has had seven husbands and she basically tells you her whole life story throughout each relationship. It's emotional. Evelyn Hugo can sometimes really be a bitch <laughs> and she knows that she can be one. There are also a lot of serious themes that are being discussed in this book and at the end you will just be wrecked. And then the last one that I want to mention is also a new 2021 favorite and that is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a 2020 release so it's relatively new and when I was kind of like looking on the internet to find more information about this book I saw that it is gonna be an HBO limited series which is so exciting. So in the story we follow two black main characters who are twins and they grew up in this small black community in like the southern part of the United States. When they were 16 they decided to fled their hometown and one of the sisters lived her life on as a black woman and the other sister decided to go through her life as a white woman and their stories come together intertwine again when their daughters meet. It is super emotional. It also really focuses on like racism and violence of white people against black people. Like I said, it's an historical fiction. It takes place from like the 1950s until the 1990s. And I loved that we like switched in perspectives of like the mothers, aka the twins and their daughters. Like the whole build up to that moment of them meeting and coming together is executed so very well. I do have to say the first 100 pages, I really had to get into like the writing style and in the Story, but once I got into it, I could not stop reading it. It's very emotional, super beautifully written, and a new favorite of mine that I think you should definitely check out. So those were all the books that I wanted to talk about in my favorite books of all time as of right now video. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Karma. You can click the link in my description box down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.